We're good to go. Oh, right on. Thank you, Matt. So, as always, I draw people's attention to line 96, where we've got blog posts, press coverage, and other weekly updates for your asynchronous reading pleasure. Um, but more importantly, if I may opine, can we all turn our attention to line 107, where a very exciting announcement waits. Dan Sinker, if you would hit star 7 to unmute and tell us your tidings of great joy, that would be great. Yeah. Hey, uh, am, I, am I audible right now? You are audible. Perfect. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm excited to announce that uh, it actually started yesterday. Uh, the Open News Community Manager position has been filled, and uh, filled. Uh, we are very lucky by Erica Owens, who uh, comes to us uh, from Philly, and she uh, is one of the co-founders of the Hacks Hackers Philly chapter. Um, she's done work in journalism and uh, also in tech stuff and uh, community organizing, uh, political organizing. So she's really kind of the perfect storm of, uh, of skills that we were looking for, and, and I'm really, really excited to have her uh, with us, and I just wanted to, to introduce her to, to everyone. So Erica, th this is everyone. <laughs> Hi, Erica. Welcome. <clears throat> And and Erica, if you actually want, right on. Erica, if you want to stay, say anything, star 7 to unmute and say hello. But just we're really psyched to have you. It's really great working with you in Boston last month, you and Dan at the uh, Open News Hack Jam. So uh, we're really excited to have you joining the team. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Uh, um, I'm really excited to be a part of it and uh, really glad to be meeting everyone via phone and other methods over time, I'm sure. <laughs> right on. And Dan, thank you for that introduction. So let us move on down to line 115 where Aaron is making the controversial assertion that we need more cats. Aaron, tell us why we need more cats because the Humane Society may not agree. <laughs> Actually, that's not me saying we need more cats. That's people that have taken our survey. So it is the, it is the public that is, are telling us we need more cats. Um, nice. No, so basically uh, we did a, an initial analysis of um, the survey results that we're getting through, um, through Symbol. And I did a blog post which is on line 118 there that, that kind of goes through um, the results in depth that I wanted to give kind of highlights on, on this call. Um, the results that we have are from the first kind of two plus weeks of um, Symbol and the Symbol project usage. And um, I see there's one question down low which um, I'm just going to answer right now. But uh, we actually have two versions of the survey. There's one that's accessible through Symbol, and then there's one that's accessible through the, um, the webmaker.org DIY projects. Um, and there's just very few <clears throat> responses on the, the DIY projects so far, which um, either means they're not getting a lot of traction or that the people that are doing them are just not giving us feedback. So, so the, these, uh, these results are really focused on um, the people that are access, accessing this through Symbol. Um, so we have 175 responses so far. Um, and based on the responses, um, the, again, Symbol projects are the most popular because we're just seeing the ones come through Symbol. But the zoo and um, H the sort of basic entry level HTML, um, it's called HTML Wrangler project, um, are the most used so far by so uh, the most used so far. So they're about like um, about 15% on each one of those, and then there's another 10 or 15% that is that um, is just using the flat editor, um, and then everything else is really spread across the rest of the project. There's like one or two um, across all of the rest of the projects. Again, this is just the sort of self-reported stuff. Um, uh, but based on the, the responses that we're getting, um, you know, we, it's a pretty basic survey. We wanted to keep it short, but also try to get at like, are people enjoying themselves? Are they having fun? Are they getting stuck? Are they learning anything? And so, um, the the of the total responses, 75% reported um, having some fun or having fun, and, with, uh, and of that, 35% were reporting like very fun or super fun. Um, and again, fun's not always going to be important. Um, that's certainly one of our design principles, but obviously there's some you know, sort of serious learning that we want to happen as well. But, um, but especially with these initial projects that we had that are kind of youth oriented and are really kind of fun based, um, this was something that we wanted to track against. 63% um, reported learning, and of that 25% reported learning a lot. Um, and I can break these down a little bit more. Oh, one thing that I forgot to put in here is, um, 
we actually the we asked about people's um, uh, previous experience with web making um, and sort of like their prerequisite um, web making skills, and we sort of expected to to see. Um, most people with no skills or not a lot of skills, but it was actually was pretty balanced across um, across all four options. So it was like the, about 25% had a lot of experience, had um, you know a considerable amount of experience, had not very much, and had no experience. So um, so there was actually a kind of a, a much more diverse set of people than we expected, um, and most likely that's due be to the fact that we also just launched Thimble as a tool in a big way, and it hit all of the tech press and. And so I think there was a lot of people that were coming to just check it out um, again as an editor or as a tool. Um, so um, of the, it was interesting though because when you start to look at the cross tabulation um, data, which is in my blog, <coughs> um, there's still even the people that are coming in and saying that they learn that they already had a lot of experience. They're still saying that they learned. Like I think it's um, close to 50% are still saying they learned something. And um, like uh, close to 60% are still saying they had fun. Um, and on the other end, the people that had no experience, um, you know, like almost 50% are saying they learned a lot, um, and um, and that's something. So it, it sort of it seems across the skill set, um, they uh, there there is still some learning that's happening, and definitely people are still having fun. And you you do see some of the um, the things that you would expect, like the 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 um, the people that um, have a little bit of experience or no experience are reporting obviously more learning than the, than the people that um, came in with some experience or a lot of experience. Um, one interesting thing is that um, the people with no experience, so the total noobs, um, reported less fun than the people with some experience. And I think that's, that's probably um, something that isn't that surprising. We knew that um, people might get a little overwhelmed um, with seeing the code if, if they haven't um, seen HTML before, um, but so again, a lot of the stuff that we expected to see, but but still um, even kind of more, it's seeing learning and fun across um, more skill sets. Um, so we asked a question about um, getting stuck, and um, I was sort of surprised when I first saw the results where 50% um, of people said they got stuck, and so obviously that's a really high number. And one of our design principles. Is um, is around failing, um, you know, fail, failing well or um, grace, uh, gracefully degrading. Um, but uh, and you know, based on that number, it looks like we're not doing that well. But but then when you actually read the the sort of open ended responses, we asked people to say did they get stuck or not, and then give us um, the reasons. Um, a majority of the people that said they got stuck um, were actually not failing. So there's a lot of responses like. Oh, I you know I skimmed the comments and then I realized I needed to go back and read them more carefully. Or, well, I I deleted the closed HTML tag and it wouldn't publish, and then I figured it out. And so there's a bunch of stuff like that, um, which you know might might have moments of frustration for people, but they're actually like figuring it out and they're learning. So so that to me it doesn't really constitute stuck. Um, there were enough tools there to sort of help them, um, but the the and there were a couple that reported the things that um, you know something like um, uh, there was one about the security um, uh, warning in Chrome, and so that they had to quit the project because they didn't trust it. And then there was another one about um, about just getting a little lost in the comments. But but it was very very few about like literally reporting things that where they they actually had to stop the process. Um, but the 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 next highest reported thing after the like. Um, the sort of, oh, I got stuck, but I figured it out, was the publish flow. And so that's a really interesting thing that I think we need to dig more into. But a lot of people were saying, I don't think publish really worked. Um, you say to copy this link and paste it somewhere, but where is where? I don't know what to do with this link. And so there are a lot of people that, um, that just you know, actually like, got through the project, but then didn't really know what to do with the end, um, the end piece. And I was talking to Chloe about it earlier, and she had said a lot of the people that she worked with at one of the events were looking for like a save button, and so they're you know sort of clicking this publish, thinking that they're saving, and then they didn't really know what to do from then on. And so, so I think we need to revisit that um, that um, that flow a lot, and that that's probably one of the biggest takeaways from this. Um, then we had some kind of open-ended suggestions about what could make it more fun, what could make it um, 
um, more have more learning for you or more more opportunity for learning. And so some of the fun ones are that you know lots of people actually said more cats, which is funny. Um, and then the probably number one request was more animal parts. So again, lots of people were doing the zoo project and they they liked it enough that they wanted to be able to make more animals. Um, and so that's something that's probably pretty easy for us to go back to the zoo and, and do. Um, but then a couple, uh, line 140 and line 141, I think are great suggestions and, and actually are um, some of them are already in the works. People asked for more examples of finished products so they could see what a successfully completed project is. Um, and obviously we don't want to constrain people, but just having some examples for those people that are a little lost. Um, and uh, that's something that we can work on. And then the other one was just that some people, uh, several, reported that when you click on a tag, the description there is just is is too heavy for them. Um, and so um, that's exactly what we had sort of seen before too. And so that's the whole simple MDN project that, um, that Jeff and Chloe and the tool have been working on and Brian. Um, and the idea is there is to kind of rewrite simple uh, descriptions for every tag and then build that into symbols. So um, that's definitely something we want help for us from the community. So definitely check out that link. But then there were two other suggestions and then I'm done that um, I think we have to think pretty hard about. One was that there were a number of suggestions about, oh, I thought there was going to be more of a WYSIWYG. Oh, I thought there's going to be more drag or drop, um, kind of, you know, sort of cheat, not cheat sheets, but like yeah, an, an easy kind of more abstracted way of, um, of working with the code. And, and we consciously decided not to do that, right? Like the, the whole point of Thimble is to immerse people in the code to actually see the real, the real stuff um, to get your hands dirty, and then to be able to go somewhere else and actually have you know know the the sort of core um, uh, stuff that you you can use other places versus having something like Scratch, which is you know, kind of these abstracted blocks that you put together and that you're not really seeing the core inner workings underneath. And so um, so again, that was a conscious decision. Um, it wasn't like an um, an overwhelming majority of a of a request, um, but it but it definitely was a theme. And so I think that's something that we'll think about. Um, and we're definitely planning on testing that through some of the DIY projects, having a DIY project with Blockly and other, um, other types of um, tools out there that already kind of allow for some of that abstracted stuff. And the other one was more sandbox content. People were saying, oh, you ask us to get, go find an image and we don't know how to do that or that's hard or um, it would be awesome if you had a set of images that you could pull from. And um, again, yes, that would probably make things easier, but part of this is also about teaching you know, how to find things on the web and really using the web as your kind of core um, uh, sort of content uh, repository. And so, so while we might consider doing that for some of the, the harder ones or, or maybe even just having like one image that's commented out that they could use to just swap, um, I think we still really want to encourage people to, to, to find things on the web. And so that is one thing we're going to go back and do is like figure out or build in more of learning around how to search for the images, not, not just sandboxing the content, but really um, giving them the skills to find stuff on the web. So that's basically it again. The blog, goes, the blog post goes into more detail, um, but now I will pause for questions. Yeah, Erin, I would turn your attention down and see if you've hit on the 151 through 155 or if there's stuff there you'd like to speak to. Cool. Um, so I think I answered. 151 is, um, uh, yes, these are just the results from Thimble. Um, but uh, we are collecting stuff on the other ones. And we'll, go back, we'll go back and um, look through those results um, and, and sort of work out those surveys as well. But again, it's very few coming from the DIYs at this point. Um, and there, another point is that uh, the survey also was added so from webmaker.org, there is a link to a, the, the survey at the end of every project listing. So there's a little crossover there too because the symbol projects are also listed there. So some of those survey results you see that they say they did like the HTML Wrangler even though they're actually using the DIY project survey. So it's a little messy there, but so we have to kind of go back and work through the, the data. Um, uh, do we have data on which projects are getting the most usage? Um, again, all I have is the survey data that I talked about before. Um, which show the zoo and the HTML Wrangler. Um, I think Atul and Michelle Levesque were working on seeing if we could actually um, get some kind of more quantitative data about about um, how many which projects are you know the people are clicking publish on or viewing or, or however we're going to pull the data. And this um, is Ben. I know that Ross has some data on at least on like projects started. I think. 
um, and possibly also Exodus. Um, I oh. forget exactly what they are, but those, those numbers do exist somewhere. Okay, cool. We will get those numbers unless Ross wants to write them in there now. Um, how do we get more responses? So, I mean, I think right now the survey is in symbol is a is little is kind of awkwardly placed. Um, it's um, basically you click publish and then it says you get the field where it says copy and paste this link and then under that field for copy and pasting there's um, it says give us feedback and there's a link. So I actually was surprised that we had 175 responses. Um, because it is, you know, it is so kind of awkwardly placed. So I, I think we already knew that. Um, it was kind of a last-minute thing that we added in, um, and we didn't want to make huge UI changes without uh, the last minute or without really kind of thinking it through. And so we, we know we want to go back and kind of figure out um, if there's a better place for it. Um, also, what we had done um, was build into the um, host uh, guide. We basically said, you know, please have your um, your attendees do the survey, and I think we can probably beef that up a little bit more. Um, and as we're talking to more of the instructors and facilitators and event hosts, like really just kind of encouraging them to um, always kind of build this in as the, the sort of last step of, of whatever they're introducing to people. Um, uh, is it possible to make Symbol run on an iPad? Um, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I mean, I, I know we have a whole roadmap that also has some mobile stuff in there, but um, uh, that's not uh, we haven't done that yet. And I think that's probably a lower priority right now to some of the other stuff that we have to fix. But it's definitely mobile for all of our stuff is on the roadmap. Um, it looks like Ross has put some numbers here. Somebody's put some numbers here um, on views and exits. Uh -huh. I think we Sorry. need to, yeah dig into exactly what that means. But yeah, over 8,000 views of the HTML Wrangler one. Um, it's your own game using JavaScript. That, that's the Code Academy one, online 161. Um, the popcorn video one, uh, Robots one, 2000, Tumblr. Yeah, so some of the, some of the partner ones have gotten um, a lot of views, but it, but based on the surveys, yeah, the, the stuff that people are digging into are um, the the view and the HTML wrangler. So yeah, so I mean, I guess in in summary, the two long don't read is just. I mean, I think it's positive results. Um, people are reporting a lot of learning. People are reporting a lot of fun. Um, again, the even though people are saying they got stuck, like a lot of the feedback that we're getting really points to like these are learning opportunities. Like people are really like digging in and kind of figuring things out and um, and that you know there's a few things that came out of this that I think are um, you know kind of clear things we need to revisit like the the published workflow um, and um, and some of the kind of supporting on some of the kind of content searching and, and finding across the web but um, overall I'm really glad we got the survey in there um, this is it's kind of a good gut check um, after a few weeks and Awesome. Thank you, Aaron. So uh, that is a mind-blowingly rich update. Uh, I'm just going to pause and make sure there are no other questions. I see some great notes getting put in, including some responses to the running on an iPad, um, and of course, boot to Gecko. Um, but right on. Thank you very much, Aaron. And um, can you let us know when the getting more cute cats in the system task is delegated so that we can hound that person? Absolutely. <laughs> right on. Ben Simon, you metrics maniac, why don't you tell us how the summer code party is a going at line 178, star 7 to unmute if you're not unmuted. I believe I am unmuted. Um, am I correct? You are correct. Yeah, great. Um, so yeah, so don't have a whole ton that's not already in the Etherpad, um, but uh, looking at sort of our two big goals, which are 1,000 events and 10,000 participants. Um, we are tracking uh, we are both. Tracking um, you know, just got crazy uh, feedback. It's someone unmuted or something. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so um, we are nearly halfway to our goal in terms of events already happened, um, which is pretty awesome since we're only like three weeks into it, um, or four or whatever. Um, 
just one caveat is, is it like there were a fair number of events that happened before June 23rd. Um, people beta testing, people just too excited to wait. Um, but uh, nevertheless, pretty awesome. Um, and there are 622 total events scheduled. Uh, and, and one other pretty awesome piece of it to draw your attention to is that uh, is the, the country totals. Um, so of the events that have already happened, those have been in 68 countries. Uh, and of the ones past 10 future, we've got them scheduled in 79 countries. Um, and so that's, I think, a pretty awesome testament to sort of global reach and how people everywhere want to care about this stuff. Absolutely. Um, there are also, uh, and, and there have been 20, over 2,500 attendees to date, we think. Um, some of this is sort of back-ended and estimated out um, just because uh, that's sort of the way it goes. So it's not, it's not the hey, case. Hey, Ben. Yeah. Maybe I'll try muting all lines again to see if that gets rid of that Great. weird background. Thanks. I'll read on. The conference has been muted. Still there, Ben? Yep. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, the, the, this 2,500 number isn't actually 2,500 people we can directly reach out to. That number is closer to eight or 900. Um, but this is, you know, reports from external events um, and estimates from some of the events that didn't really do RSVP tracking at all and that type of thing. But it's a pretty, it's a pretty conservative estimate, um, and so uh, we feel good about that number. Um, and then, of course, uh, the party uh, won't stop. Um, can't stop, won't stop, right? So you got um, events this week all over. Um, Mexico, India, Brazil, U.S., Canada, Cameroon, Switzerland, and many, many more. Um, and with the snazzy new um, event uh, display stuff that Andrew demoed on last week's call, um, which has now been moved to production, you can actually just click on that link in line 200 and see every event that's happening around the world in chronological order um, from this day forth. Um, so, uh, so yeah, um, that's all I got. That's awesome, Ben. No really weird arcane fun facts to share. What was the event at the highest altitude? Um, <laughs> well, there's one coming up in Switzerland, I've got to assume. It's fairly high. There you go. Alp makers. Very excellent. Well, thank you for that excellent update and for tracking these excellent metrics. Very, very exciting. So we are now turning to line 207 in the pad of Ether and asking Rebecca M. to talk to us about how we might do a better job of surfacing the best Moz Party content. Rebecca, star 7 to unmute. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Awesome. Um, this is just a quick uh, touch base request actually to the team. Um, uh, the question has everything to do with what we're seeing above on the pad. Um, what I'd really like to do is just figure out where's a good point of entry to coordinate um, what we're saying out to the world um, with some really good incoming data. And um, I'd like to, to use the content a little bit better to provide direction to people to, what, um, to, to improvements that we might have made um, and just sort of send them to the right place. If we know something's broken, I don't want to send them to that anymore, things like that. Um, our channels are growing really, really rapidly, and there's a lot of interest. So, um, for example, if you see online 211, um, surfacing some of the content, like there's some really great stuff in here. Um, I've got this amazing link dump of symbol projects online 213 from POMAX, for example, um, that I used to make that cute little animated GIF on line 212. Um, but that really, that took forever to surface and make, and um, we're looking at about 15 or 20 posts per day now, um, if possible, because we have a lot of different channels and a lot of different places, and um, they don't sort of automatically pretty themselves up. So um, as you can tell, I'm sort of looking for ways to, uh, to surface these makes a little bit better, and if you know uh, a good way for me to do that, um, or uh, if you have any status updates on you know, galleries and different things that might be coming into play, um, I would love to talk to you. Um, so I don't want to create more work for anyone. This is basically just a shout out to say, hey, if you've got um, any cool things in the works that might help us find stuff a little bit easier or 
um, if you can tell me some information that you're learning, if there's a place that I can come and join you. Um, I'd love to coordinate and learn from you guys. Um, I'd like to hear what you're finding out. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Anybody have any thoughts for Rebecca? Um, <clears throat> and Rebecca, I think you might want to turn your attention down to line 232 um, okay. just to see if any of those questions are things that you might want to respond to now in real time. Um, okay. When are the completed project galleries scheduled to ship in their first iteration for Thimble and for Popcorn? Okay. Um, well, those are questions that are coming from us. Um, I don't know um, where yeah, we're that was kind of. That was kind of us, Gunnar. Um, like, I guess, Rebecca, partly I think like, the question you're asking is, right now when you're looking for great examples of stuff people have made with WebAnchor tools, um, you're looking at link dumps like what's in line 222, which is um, <clears throat> difficult, obviously, to pull out the best, the best stuff, right? But there is gold in there. Like, um, they're really it's a really cool we found love hidden in the code example that you surfaced and um, exactly so you're just and wondering about how do we how do we make it easier for people like you to find great content like that yes exactly and also we can use the we can use these communication channels to solve problems for us like um, one of the most popular posts on Tumblr is when I specifically said hey how are you are you trying the Tumblr project can you please um can, can you tell us if you've tried it and go try it and let us know what you think. I have no idea what the feedback is, where the feedback for that went, but I do know that that request was shared um, pretty actively last week. Um, and so I don't, uh, there's, a, there's a disconnect between uh, what, we're, what we're asking people to do and what we find out about what we've sent them to go off and do. So I'm just sort of looking to find out where you guys are talking about um, the results that you're seeing. And um, if we're not talking about them, it would be a great time to start because um, our channels are growing like gangbusters and there's a lot of potential for us to help you uh, find the answers to the questions that you might be having. So Matt, when we find cool stuff that people have made, where are we sending it? Who do we, what do we do? Um, so most of the best stuff is really on Tumblr, thanks. To Rebecca's work. Like I feel like this is like the single sort of, you know, when we first launched, we were trying to collect everything and anything in Etherpad. Yeah. And I feel like where we've moved to is Tumblr. So, I mean, one of the things that we talked about, Rebecca, was making it easier for people, including people on this, this call, to submit stuff through Tumblr themselves by just clicking on a submit link. Um, is that one place where we could start? Like if Ryan wants to see something cool and wants to share it, what's Ryan's best workflow right now? Um, I, would, I would love for everybody to be using a submit function on Tumblr, mostly because um, of all the channels that we have, Tumblr is one of the simplest ones to just uh, send, a, send a submission. You can put your pictures in, you can put in your text, you can put in a question, pretty much anything goes. And it comes to the back end, so it's not that it's like a free-for-all that anybody can just po post whatever they want onto our Tumblr. Um, it, it's probably the best place to send people, um, but of course everybody's still working very hard, and um, we should have an update to uh, those links appearing on the front end probably by the end of the week or um, as soon as a couple of people are, are more available for that. Um, so that's a great suggestion. Um, uh, focusing on Tumblr is a great suggestion. Um, so can I actually do that now? That, that yeah, I can. I, There's a link. There is a ticket a file. Ticket. Um, make tweaks to Tumblr design, and Chris has said he's going to try to look at it tomorrow. Okay. So the the Tumblr thing is coming, but for the you know 50 people on this call and for everybody that we run into, I'd love everybody to go away with the idea that. If you see a great thing that a webmaker made, that you should share it with someone. So, what, where do we want to make that point, person? Who do we want that to be, or what do we want to do? I'd love everybody to leave with an action item. Send them um, back. What I can do is I can put the Tumblr link down there. Um, but this is this is partly why I wanted to coordinate with everybody um, as to where where we think is the most effective place. Um, to send, to send content, to find it, 
um, and to learn from it. It's, um, it's a huge challenge. We all have this challenge, um, finding one good place to uh, work from. So um, I, will, I will provide Tumblr as an option right now. I think it could be really effective. Um, and if you have other ideas, I would love to hear them. And that's my piece of the call. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right, moving on down the line. <coughs> Jacob on line 252, the rumor is you're about to tell us the sights and the sounds of Story Camp. Jacob star 7 to unmute. Paging Jacob. Hi, Jacob. how's it going? Hey, Jacob, welcome. Tell Hello. us about the sights and sounds. The sights and sounds of Story Camp. I have a new blog post up, um, and in there is a bunch of links of uh, some different projects from youth across America. Um, so yeah, we've been getting some good stuff, uh, especially with the pop-up videos. Uh, so if you scan through some, uh, some of the links on that blog post, uh, you'll see um, a dancing President Obama on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Um, you'll see uh, cats playing patty cake, things like that. Um, we have a really cool robot invasion down there. Um, so yeah, in there there's a bunch of different links of Story Camp. We're halfway through, so we just finished week three, uh, and now we're kind of getting into some more advanced stuff. Um, so the first three weeks we had uh, different activities around just playing with popcorn and getting comfortable with um, uh, throwing stuff in from YouTube and remixing and adding your own um, flavor. Um, and so now we're kind of focusing on you know, planning uh, real life stories um, within these communities and within these youth centers. Um, and so we're trying to make a leap um, to do more focus on that. Um, okay. We're finding uh, we have a handful of youth centers that are really more engaged than some of the other ones, and so we're going to right. huddle close and, um, and, and flesh out some of those story ideas. Um, so Brett and I put in some key learnings so far on line 258. Um, one of the issues that we've been having with web conferencing is that it's kind of boring to young people. Um, even though we have, we've had great speakers, um, we uh, had feedback that the youth kind of got a little bit lost and their minds kind of wandered while they're sitting in the chair kind of looking at a screen. So we're going to experiment this week. We have Michelle Levesque, our very own, um, uh, going over some symbols. So we're thinking of doing like an HTML pad and hacking together. Um, so hopefully uh, that works out like where we can all kind of actually be actively working on stuff together uh, instead of kind of being talked at. Um, and so we're going to see if we can get everyone on their own screen and be able to do an Etherpad together. Um, yeah, so uh, that will be a different experiment versus sort of having a lecture and um, you know, having speakers where they can't really see the faces of the people that they're talking at and things like that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're focusing on the core group. Um, one of the interesting things, of course, is that uh, you know when people have sort of this empowering tool like popcorn, where it's like, okay, take any YouTube video and you can make pop-ups and you can comment and do make it your own. You know, I remember the first time I learned Photoshop and some of the really silly stuff I made, um, and so. It's, it's always interesting that people kind of deviate towards uh, something you know, goofy and bizarre. Um, and so I'm interested to see uh, what evolves now once they start to get you know, a feel for what they're capable of with things like popcorn. Um, and uh, as you can see, Bayback has some plans to popcornize six different pieces that they make in their factory program. Um, and I talked to uh, some new people. So some people are just joining this week. So we have a guy in Hollister, California with Youth Alliance, and they have um, a mission to do surveys on healthy and what makes their community healthy and solving health problems, community health problems. And so he was really excited about popcorn. I just showed him a walkthrough yesterday with maps and stuff, and he wants to give people cameras and you know go to the parks and survey different parks and. Um, actually use popcorn as like a surveying tool with video. Um, so I'm excited to see how that, how that comes along. And so yeah, now we just got to make the leap to, um, 
to get the different youth centers to think outside of the box and do the story vision tech model that we're promoting. Um, so yeah, three more weeks of story camp for the learning period, and then in August uh, we'll make some stuff. How's that sound? That sounds really good. Thank you. All right, and I'm just looking to see if there's any questions. We don't have any right there right now. Any questions for Jacob? Hey Jacob, I've got, a question. I've got a question for you. Um, it's really cool that key learning you identified in line 262 that there's like a core group of instructors. And you're yeah. Shifting your focus to helping them. Do you think that is like is that a group that you think will um, like outlast Story Camp? Like is this kind of like a uh, like a lasting community that you think will will carry on past the summer? Well, one of the groups um, they're called Mars M A R Z, and it's an acronym. Um, they're more rural, and they're training. Uh, she has like a, a a mentor, like a youth mentor that that is going to kind of carry the torch. Um, they do their program year round, and so some of, some of the programs, you know, only come in for the summer, and some of them want to do it more year round. And so uh, it would definitely be great to turn the corner, and um, you know, as as we're sort of noticing to train the trainers, um, and have people who are you know stronger within the organization to 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 train down for newcomers beyond the summer. Um, yeah, and some some folks were saying we're too busy this summer, but we want to do it in the fall as well. When I did the like the initial calls to try and get them to sign up, so we do have a handful of people who are interested, just but too busy for summer. So. Any other questions? Right on. Very good stuff, Jacob and the whole Story Camp team. Thank you so much. Yeah, check out um, line 254 and you guys will get some other examples too. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, 277 Pop Squad Update from Anjum of People's Production House. Anjum, if you're with us and want to hit star 7 to unmute. So if you're having trouble unmuting, feel free to indicate that in the chat window. I think she mentioned, Gunnar, that she was on a train, and so she might not be able to stick around for the oh, call. Oh, that's right. That's right. Hey, yeah, hey, this is Leah. I'm just going to chime in and say that Anjum and I are heading, are in Chicago, and we're about to do a popcorn workshop, and uh, we're, we're on the train. <laughs> so, we, so we won't get an update, but um, I'll, let her, I'll let her know, and she can come back later. Perfect. Thank you. And I noticed on line 282 that some slacker named Mark S. has postponed his agenda item until next week. All right, Matt, could we be done? I'm looking at an almost empty rest of Etherpad. <coughs> Do you want to say anything about the all hands? <coughs> I think so. Just that uh, I'd love to work with um, the Summer Code Party team to pull together a lightning talk on like highlights so far for for Monday, but um, yeah, unless anybody has any final nonverbal updates or verbal updates, I think maybe we are done early. Right. Well, Matt, if you, if you want to turn your attention to line 291, Henrik has Remo Camp Summary that he wants to share. Henrik, are you able to get audio-fied? Yes, I should be. Do you hear me? Yes, we hear you beautifully. Tell us about Remo Camp. Excellent. Um, I just posted what I'm trying to say. Uh, so basically last weekend we had a Remo camp in, in Berlin the whole weekend. Uh, most of you probably don't know what Remo is, but I believe that there is some relevance. So I'd quickly like to give a 30 seconds uh, introduction. So uh, Remo is a, is a program that was founded a year ago, and uh, the, the aim of our program is to grow the Mozilla community. And the camp we just had on the weekend was basically focusing on governance of, of, this, uh, of this group and, and uh, content priorities. Michelle Thorne was there uh, as a guest speaker, and she held a pre presentation on the WebMaker initiative. And following that, we had a short breakout session with some of the, of the Mozilla reps who are interested in, 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 in web making and drumbeat uh, topics. And, and discussed how to best support at this year's uh, Mozilla Festival. 
uh, I believe that this uh, discussion will ge will go on, and we will meet again at um, Mozilla uh, Camp in September. Uh, also, kind of a last uh, last word. So most of the remos, the Mozilla representatives, are focused on a typical uh, Firefox priorities like desktop, mobile, and uh, boot gecko. But there are some of us who are who are who identify themselves more with uh, the typical drumbeat and webmaker. Uh, goals and initiatives, such as I, for example. So, if if any of you wants to reach out to Ramos uh, and or the the wider global Mozilla community, feel free to drop us a note at uh, the Remo IRC channel or uh, or on the Rex general mailing list. Thank you very much. Excellent. Yeah, thank you, Henrik. That's a great update. Very appreciated. All right. Well, I think we may have actually run our course now. Beautiful people with 12 minutes to spare. We are going to draw this weekly Mozilla Webmaker community call to a close. And thank you all for joining and participating. We'll see you all same time next week on this same channel. Have a great web making week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Gunnar. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.